Hello and welcome back to Salonka. And I have been busy, boy have I been busy. It is now September 3. Ignore the poor stacking. That's just how it goes sometimes. This is our parsnip harvest, as you can see. Hopefully there will be some sort of montage of showing the last sort of 24, 48 hours on the farm. I did manage to finish clearing the carrots from the last episode. And that took so long that I thought, I'll try and get the parsnips done in between. But again, that took so long. So it took quite a few days actually to do the carrots and the parsnips. And to break that up, I have cultivated two of the fields. So we, we had a busy September too. And we're now trying to get these sold. We didn't, not sold, but down to the Zup Zup Soup Factory. We didn't deliver all of our carrots when they were done, just because it's been such a pain in the backside uh, loading onto these trailers. I definitely need to invest in uh, some other sort of trailer for lugging these crates about. I think for other crates, these might be perfectly fine. But these new crates, this trailer does not like. It slides, it bumps about. Uh, with the carrots, I did manage to pull uh, both of these full very slowly and we did have help from Zup Zup and the, uh, the, the 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 truck and trailer from there now I was really hoping that the auto load feature was going to work and I could just drive around and pick up my carrots it wasn't the case although it registered that it was trying to auto load nothing actually loaded so Hopefully, we'll get some sort of update for the auto loading. I think it's the enhanced auto load feature, or, or I, I, I don't know. I don't use the auto load enough. Let really you know what they're all called. There's different types of auto load, and I think that's that's the one that you can add on yourself, and that works universally with everything. But obviously, it's not it's not updated for the new stuff. So that was, uh, yeah, that was something that was fun, getting all those down. And we do have a lot still in storage at the farm. I've put them in our, our storage shed, and that's where the rest of the parsnips are going to go because it takes so long to do this. And I'm trying not to cheat anything. I'm working really hard off screen to, uh, to progress. So the parsnips will go in storage as well, and then every, every couple of days we'll bring a load down to Zup Zup and we'll keep the the soup factory stocked up now they've spawned some soup to be sold so you never know we may get a little jobby running that down and delivering that we'll see how we get on with what we're doing I should imagine by the end of the day that's actually going to have a, a full spawn area so we might have to do that although it will it will store up inside that's that's not like the worst thing in the world so we'll get these off. Now when I tried to pull both of these today, um, the, the back one just flipped right over and at one point I, I think it got stuck in my shed, which was uh, quite annoying. I thought I was going to have to unpack it and pull it out and reset it all. I came out and went back in again and it sort of freed itself that way. So if you do have anything get stuck, just try that. But let's uh, let's head back to the farm because we do have a lot of work to do today. So welcome back to our little farm. Here we are. Like I said, I have been busy. I'll show you. Here are our carrots. Now they don't look like carrots again because the storage needs to be updated to actually visually show carrots. They look like grain, but there are 13 pallets of not carrots, uh, red beet. I keep saying carrots, and it's not carrots. I'm obsessed with carrots. Red beet. 13 pallets that are full. And we've got one that we did at the end that's got 1,000 in, and the other one that's got 34 litres in that I um, yeah, I accidentally popped out early. Got stuck in a box, didn't it? So, yeah. This is where we got stuck on the which shed we got. I parked both of these up. I thought, ah, oh, to stop them spinning around as I load them up, I'll line them up along there, and they can't go anywhere. Wrong. They phased through and the wheels got stuck in the wall, but they, they came out in the end. But they're both parked up here. So we still have all of these pallets of parsnips, which is probably 
easily another 20 odd. I, I didn't count them. We had 50, 52, 53 pallets of uh, red beet. And I should imagine we've got much the same again now. We've just took 20 pallets down. So we may even have more of it. I think parsnips was a little bit bigger. I think it's a little bit longer. So we've got, what's it, got? 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12 here. So it's 14. This is a partial box from the end. So we've got 14 and a half. 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21. 2 to 3 to 4 to 5 to 6 to 7 28 and a half I don't think there's anything more at the top there another 28 and a half pallets so that's uh, yeah that's a lot and they're going to go in the storage so this field needs plowing this field needs plowing the two fields I managed to cultivate are these ones here that had our sorghum i think it was did we have sorghum i think we had sorghum and wheat or was it canola and sorghum anyway these two grain fields they have been cultivated unfortunately we've got stones i think these might be large stones and these might be small stones so we may need a stone picker we'll probably lease that stone picking is going to be a thing on this series we're doing everything now this other field over here this one needs plowing up but this is the one that came in with a cultivated ready to go uh, seed bed so we're just going to ignore that it needs plowing for now because i'm not going to plow over a cultivated field and we're going to plant some wheat in here and it doesn't matter that it's not going to be high yield or lack of anything this is just wheat to feed our few chickens and I think that may, that may be my first job of the day. So let's get something hooked up and uh, start doing some planting. So for planting our wheat today, we're going to be using our Fiat 16090. Lovely little bit. Lovely bit of kit. And we've got the, the Accord pneumatic. And yeah, just a small working width on this one. Everything's about three meters. Everything we have, I think, is about three meters or less. We'll try and get some seeds in there with our lovely little Ursus. Not a master at this sort of stuff. Unfortunately, I get too comfortable <laughs> and use super strength. So, we're stripping it right back on this series. Going with a real thing. Oh, that's right underneath that. It's going to lift the whole, the whole unit. Are we in? We're not quite. There we are. That'll do us. So there's a thousand litres in here. I can't remember what the uh, the capacity is on the uh, uh, Accord. We're getting the names of things as well now. It's taken so long to do all the jobs in between. I'm sort of forgetting what I'm doing. Now I may even go to buy... Does that not fill? Is that not going to do that for me? You bugger. Typical. You try and do it proper. And that's what you get for your troubles. Right. So yeah, I may even go to buying small bags. We can do it by hand. I know that would be an absolute chore. But I think it could be fun. Let's put this away. Let's get out there and start planting. Trying to do things somewhat realistically. <laughs> Yeah, right pain in the bum. That pallet is still stuck on the pallet forks. It just would not come off. So it is what it is. It's still there. So let's get this planted. Let's get some wheat in the ground. Let's do some farming. That's what we need to be doing, some farming. So we we may it's installed. We will probably start to use proceed. I don't think I'll bother with proceed on this field. I'm not even sure if we have... Well, we do have a spreader, don't we? So perhaps we should. I'll do it manually. Because that's how I'm, I'm going to try and do things. We've got to check what the width of our spreader is and stuff like that. So, yeah, probably about 30 metres, which is probably the width of this field, to be fair. go 
So I hope you're all well. I hope you enjoyed the first two episodes. Now I've put one out with music all the way through it, because I thought that'd be a, a nice little touch, something different. And then I put the second one without, um, hoping for some feedback. They neither video has gone live at the point of me recording this, but I'm going to put put a request for some feedback as to what people would prefer with the music in there or without the music. I just thought it'd be something different. Tried to find something a little bit, a little bit Eastern European sounding. So one of it is a little bit <laughs> hillbilly US, but you know, potatoes, potatoes, I guess. It's rural. That's what we were going for. Hopefully, uh, hopefully you enjoyed them. You'll have to once again like, let me know. I'm I'm all about the feedback. I love the comments. You know, if you just want to say nice video, that's fine. But I, I prefer you know. A little bit of critique is good. What you do like, what you don't like is even better. So then I know what to do more of and what to do less of. But like I say, this is going to be for our chickens. They shouldn't need a lot. I think we only hold about 10 chickens. In time, we may get more because I do like doing chickens. I like to have that egg money coming in. It's quite an easy income. Low maintenance. So the, the soup money should be pretty good once we start selling it. But that's a lot of work. Not in producing the soup, but in getting the vegetables out of the ground. I think one of the first things we're going to try and get is a larger harvester. There is a modded beet harvester on the mod hub that will that'll now do the, uh, the new crops. And I have been sent two other... Uh, modified harvesters that'll do the new crops as well so if any of those come up second hand and cheap and we can afford it we'll definitely grab them i like doing the boxes we'll still do some boxes but we could do some that get boxed and some that just get picked and put into a trailer and if we've got something with a capacity to hold them then that's that's better because we're not we're not rich i don't want to be paying out wages for workers at the minute and cosplay workers and auto drive workers are going to be earning a wage on this series. I think I said it's set at fifty percent. So you know, if we've if we've got workers on, we're losing money. So I think on my next row, I will put I'll put a route a, um, a tram in, so then we can at least do that for fertilising, and I'll. Put one in every five, maybe. Five might be a good number to start doing. Now we do still have carrots to get out of the ground. Uh, the carrots are going to come out in October. I double checked. We are running four day months. I wasn't sure if it was three or four day months. We're running four day months, and we can get most of these veggies out of the ground up until November. So there's not a mad rush to do that. And we can't replant again until uh, April. So that's, once again, there's no rush. We've got all of winter to repurpose the fields. So it's nice to get a bit of wheat in the ground. We'll want to get some other sort of money crop going as well. So we'll probably get some oats or some soybean in. That should do us pretty well. We need to get our potato field ready. We need to get the spuds in. That's all. That's all waiting for us down at our other other farm that we've got. Plus, we've got. Two, I think we've got two fields up um, at the northern section where the carrots are in the ground. We lost the wheat near our potato. Or was going to become our potato fields. So there's that. I was supposed to put tram line in, weren't I? So I put tram in this time. I got distracted. I'm going by eye at the minute. I might even start to use the the ridge markers. That would be a good idea, wouldn't it? I control R, I think, for turning that on. It looks like they're going down. Getting a ridge. Or a tram, sorry. The unfortunate thing is because it goes by the tyres, 
and that's pretty much butt up against where that's planting as well, or a seeding. So and I've drifted over. That's why we need the ridge markers. None of our old equipment has uh, GPS on it, so there's, you know, no, no help and aid there. Turn it off. Not a lot of room to turn our tractors around. Once we've got crops in these fields, that is going to be a challenge. So we can see where one of them is, quite clearly. And this one is sort of seeded along this edge. So we just need to give it enough room. Our tyres are pretty wide, so it does give us quite a, a thick pram. So we just have to be careful, get it nice and straight where I can, as I'm wobbling my wheel about. so that we can get a few other jobs in this episode I'm going to crack on with this and uh, I'll probably see you guys once I've got all the wheat in the ground a wheat field is nearly planted I've probably just got one, maybe two if I overlap it rows left to go we've put in two tram lines our spreader is 36 metres this is 3 metres so it should cover like 10 passes so we've gone like five meter or five rows in tram then we've gone like 10 11 rows then another tram and then we've got our last few i sort of wavered off there which is annoying <laughs> i've got an extra tram <laughs> so yeah we've uh, tried to put the trams in it should should be all right should make sense there now I have had a little look in the store as well while I've been doing this to see what is available for us to purchase sort of second hand. What can we use? What is there that's cheap that's going to help our farm? And there's quite a bit actually at the minute. It's, we're quite fortunate. I'm, we're unfortunate that we haven't got a lot of money though. So we are going to head off to Zup Zup and we are going to do a delivery of goods because then we'll get paid. Zubzub will get their money. We'll get paid and we might be able to afford some second-hand equipment that's going to help us. Maybe not right away, but actually one of them will help us right away. But certainly uh, in the future endeavours of our farm. So I'll get this put away now that we're done. And uh, we'll hop into the store and see what's about. So over at the store in the used section, You'll see we've got the, I don't even know how, what, what brand that is. Is that the FMRZ 406? And that is a beet harvester. Now that could be handy because we're doing a lot of root crops. We've not actually got a beet harvester. There's a potato harvester down the other thing. So we could have potatoes and beets over there and we'd have another harvester. And that's, that's only three grand. We can make that our own. With background, without background, what's that all about? Oh, it's just a rare sticker, okay. So yeah, that's pretty cheap, four grand for that. And that's gonna be gone pretty soon, so we're gonna to have to pull the trigger on that. There is a truck, I'm not too worried about truck at the minute. Uh, as I was scrolling through, I was like, oh look, they, they've got a uh, stone picker, 14 grand. That could be handy, but we've only got little fields, and we've only got a few stones. There is the stone picker, Front bucket, that's for skid steer, see if we can change that. Front loader, and that'll still hold 2,000 litres, which will probably clear a lot off of our field. Level is active. I think we can change that ourselves as we as we wish. But that's, that's only 1,700. We are going to buy that because we can put that on the Ursus and we can go and clear our stones that way, and that'll be the cheapest way. Not necessarily the most efficient, but at the minute we've got to save money and try and get the best yield we can from our other fields because our wheat field is not the yield well. So I am going to buy that one. But also, we've got some quite nice, small, older, cheap tractors. 
and we've 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 gone with the the John Deere 6010. I think we have a 6010 over on American Falls, so we don't have to worry about that one. I am interested in the MB Track 440 though. We can go for the larger engine. Is that the larger engine? 90, 125. There we go. We're looking at a larger engine here. There we are. Yeah. So that's like 40 grand. And then you can put the front loader on it. And this could eventually replace the Ursus because we're not going to need all these tractors. And it would only be a short term replacement because it's going to get expensive to repair. But it's a little little bit more horsepower. Um, it's going to be able to pull more, it's going to be able to lift more. But that is pretty much all of our money at 41,000. Now that's going to be there for a few more days, I hope. It's not going anywhere. Further down on the used market, we also have a T5 utility. Um, what does that go up to in engine size? 114 horsepower. A lot newer than everything else on the farm. Being that new, we could even uh, look to stick some GPS in it. 114 horsepower, it would pull most of the machines that we work. We could put front loader on it. If we were to put GPS in it, though, we're suddenly looking at 70 grand, and that's without doing any other modifications. So that does put it out of our price range, which also sort of puts the, the Mercedes-Benz back in play, I think. Where was the... Uh, the larger engine where was the 125 there it is so that's 40 grand but if we wanted to put obviously gps in this that's at 55 so you know it still works out a little bit cheaper i think but yeah we need to make some money so in an attempt to try and make that money we're going to go and do a run or zups up sell some goods and then we've just gone down our little old truck. Not taking the. We don't want to show off and be flashy. We could even end up selling our Land Rover. That might be a thing, just to make some money. I don't think it's worth a lot. It's getting, it's getting pretty old as the Land Rover. We've had it a while. And we've got this beautiful truck here that came with the farm when we brought it. So why not utilize this? There's this funny bit of traffic down here. Anyone else notice that? <laughs> they get in the way as well sometimes. Because they come and they just turn around and then shoot back down. They, they've got no need to go down there. They, they're clearly getting lost. So we'll take our route down here. But yeah, this is where we could do... We could have potatoes and beets coming out here. And we could store all that here. It's not overloading at the farm. That could be a thing. That's what I'm thinking anyway. Can't really see out that window, can you? You have to be... Up a tiny to uh, see where you're going in this truck. It's not for big people. Six foot three, 200 plus pound. This truck is not really designed for me, but I love it. Right, where should we park? We'll park around the back and uh, we'll hop in the works truck. Can we see out the back? Not really. Oh, yeah, we can. There we go. Turn your head the right way. Beautiful Jarby, lovely. So we'll get to see if the new production pallets will auto load. It's set to take Euro pallets at the minute. Should take 14. Let's see what we can get on it. I press. One. So we're on. It's not not registering the new pallets, which is a little bit, a little bit frustrating. That was the whole point in getting this truck with the auto loaders that we could quickly whip the pallets on for deliveries. I haven't got nothing down there to manually load them as well, so I have to just pop these on myself. I'm afraid. So give me a minute. There we are. We've got our five pallets on. Now again, if it's me and I'm doing something wrong with the auto load. Let me know because I really haven't a clue when it comes to auto load. What I'm doing, this has so many different settings. See, it registers that there's five pallets on there, but it wouldn't load the five pallets. I think it's because of the product type isn't added in yet. I just don't think it's registered. And we're just taking it across the road. And uh, we're going to drop it off here. How much we're going to make for it, I don't know. 
I'm not expecting a lot, but we'll uh, we'll see. It'll be nice to get some money. Does it even register <laughs> from there? I think that might be uh, might be too high to even uh, sell. Right. So I think we're going to have to get some red beet not accepted here. It is. Let's have another little check. Is this not the farmer's market? I'm pretty sure this is the farmer's market. Red beet soup, farmer's market. If not, we'll try the supermarket. This is the farmer's market. This should be accepted here. Perhaps there's a different trigger. Ah, there's a different trigger. That's what it is. There we go. I was going to say. Very confusing. 17 grand. So, worth the confusion. We can definitely uh, do that more regular. And th I need to make sure that they're producing the parsnips as well now. I don't think we turned the parsnips on. Do a little word with the foreman. And we'll make sure that parsnips are running. Our red beet. Still got 55,000 litres in there. We did get more red beet down here. Like I said, we've still got red beet up there to deliver. And we've got another 40,000, if not more, parsnip to bring down as well. But that's that's going to be good money. If that can sell for every couple of days, we can make 17 grand. That would be lovely. And But it's only going to be short term, isn't it? You know, this is going to last forever. But like I said, we've got carrots to come as well. Our potatoes can make soup, so that's good. And then we can do the triple soup. Once you put all of them in, we can do triple soup. I wonder, does triple soup sell better? It does. Triple soup is twice as much. Okay, we need to get our carrots down here. So I think what we'll do is cut that corner. <laughs> I think what we'll do is... Once we've harvested all our carrots, we'll bring all the carrots and the rest of the red beet and the rest of the parsnip, and then we'll activate the triple soup. And that should then be more money, I think, hopefully. Whether that works out to be more money, obviously you're using three products, but you're using a third of each, getting double the money. I think it should. I think that should work out more. Now, I think I might see what the Ursus is worth if we sold it. I mean, it's not going to be a lot, I know that. I'm not even sure where we put it to sell it. But we'll uh, we'll have a look. I think around the back. I'm sure this is where we sell things. Really it'll keep the, uh, the triggers up, don't I? There we go. There it is. So, nine grand two grand for the front loader part of it I think we might do that and then uh, purchase the, the Mercedes I think that's just going to be more beneficial for us so we'll sell that sell that oh wait there, we should repair it if we repair and repaint so it's going to cost us 1,126 so we want that to be more than 2,200 really Hmm, I don't think that was worth uh, repair. It's worth. It's, we've earned like an extra 10, 10 for that. Okay. Whatevs. It's sold. But now we've got 81 grand, so we can buy ourselves the more powerful of the Mercedes. The colour is fine. I'm happy with that. Wheels can stay the same. Three point. You'll put three point on the front. Yeah, just in case we need extra weight at some point. Not worried about windows, additional lights, not too worried about trailer hitch standard. I think we just roll with standard for now. I do apologise if you can hear uh, a little bit of crying in the background. My son is teething, but he is with his mother. He's fine. Uh, fender extensions. I do like fenders. I do like when they have the little... Uh, Extras. Plus, if we get bigger wheels, that'll that'll make sense eventually. Don't worry about top cab uh, valves, hub standard front loader attached. We do want, and it just comes with a stroll. So we'll have to remember we need a stroll one. Do we get the GPS? Sixty grand leaves us with twenty. 
I don't think we need the GPS just yet. Not on our little farm. So we're going to buy that. That's going to cost us 45,000. But that does mean we need to also get a front loader for it. I wonder if we can get this in a... It's almost the right sort of colour for the Merc, isn't it? So we'll go with that. And that's going to cost us 5,600. So it's not been a cheap upgrade, but it has been an upgrade. Not quite the right colour for the Merc, but you know what? <laughs> it will do. I love gearish clashing colours. That's sort of my thing. See it attached. Hopefully. There we go. Let's bring it up a little bit. Oh, this is going to be... I think this is going to be much better than the Ursus. Obviously, the Ursus was an old bit of kit from the old farm. This is an old bit of kit for our new farm. Moving up in the world. Just grab it like that. We're clearly going to need to put that bigger weight on the back here, which is absolutely fine. I have already put the ooh, the crystal out in the field and put one of the Velgas uh, into uh, trailer mode. Trailer mode. You know, capacity holding. Definitely going to need some weight on the back. That's a heavy old bucket, and that's before we've got anything in there. That is slightly worrying, isn't it? If you ask me. I thought the Merc was going to be uh, a lot heavier, a lot more capable. Although, to be fair, with, a, with just the pallet fork on the front, and after I took the weight off, the Ursus pretty much did a somersault, so... It's a little bit better, but let's see how it manages once it's got some stones in it, because we're now going to go stone picking, and uh, we're going to do it this way. It's brilliant. I have used these front buckets for stone picking before. Did it on... Um, the, the, no, what's say Valley of the Old Farm? It's nice. Um, the old stream valley, or Valley of the Old... Yeah, you know the one. You know the one. Black Sheep Modern's map. And... Yeah, I was going to do... Like when that first came out, like everyone else, I was going to get on there and I was going to do a, a vineyard series. I'd recorded two episodes, and um, yeah, because my time frame of getting things done isn't as good as maybe other people's, hence why my Zelenka is coming out two weeks after everyone else has started one. But uh, some of that I enjoyed watching Virtual Farmer, he had instantly started this exact same idea, I think, so... Yeah, I didn't bother. I deleted it and went and did something else instead. <laughs> so do I need to turn that on? I do. There we are. And we can just drive up and down. And this will scoop up our stones for us. Then as we fill, we can uh, pop them in the Velga. And you can do this at a good good pace because you can just do it as, as quick as you would drive your tractor, I think, until, you know, you fill up. A little bit of a weird one, I'm sure. And, you know, trying to make it cheaper than getting the, the towed things actually probably turned out a hell of a lot more expensive because we brought a new tractor. But, I need to just bring that up a little bit. We're catching. But our new tractor is going to do so much more than just this and it's going to be more capable when it comes, hopefully more capable anyway when it comes to loading things in. Why is that not now moving? Let's have a little look. Is it because it's on? I am now unable. There we go. That's better. Gotta get used to it. Just didn't want it bouncing about quite as much as it is. Because it's stopping us from steering. Gonna have to get used to this. Sorry, sorry about the funny angles. There we go. Once it starts colliding with the earth, <laughs> you uh, lose the ability to turn. And that's with all tractors and all things, I think. tarmac there. That track is solid. 
But this is probably going to take me a while, without a doubt. As you can see, this is not going to be a quick, easy job. But it's something different. So I shall crack on and try and get my field cleared of stones. And uh, I'll see you guys in a bit. Last few stones now go in. Now I would say this has to be probably the more enjoyable way of doing stones without, you know, having a massive cheaty stone picker. It takes time. Oh, I've slowed my time. Up to my time, slowed my time. I didn't want to be doing it in the dark. But I wanted to have it done by the end of today. But our stones are picked. We had to go back and grab a few little spots that I'd missed because I didn't want them in there. But yeah, it's. We also got them out of the other field as well. There was only little stones in there, so there's very few, very few stones. Um, I want to go to Pafab, don't I? Where am I going? Yeah. Time consuming? Yes, but stone picking is time consuming. But I'd say, yeah, definitely, definitely the way to do it. If you've got a small farm, obviously, if you've run on a big farm, you don't want to be doing that. You get yourself a big old stone picker with a massive <laughs> width. But if you're just running a small farm, running it cheap get a front bucket and uh, stone pick that way it's just easier Let's see if we can put this on the shelf but yeah I was a little bit disappointed that the, the Merc didn't have a bit more weight to it I cannot lie I want to turn it off do a little push go on Chew on there beautiful job so let's put the Merc somewhere. Actually, I might just park it down the side there. And we'll uh, go and run the stones we've got down uh, to the Debris Crusher. We'll earn ourselves, you know, a hundred quid. We spent thousands to earn ourselves a hundred quid, but that's the way this goes. But we did get over 4,000 litres of stones, so, you know, that's a fair bit of stonage off those fields. Now, I do need to put our pallets into storage. I'll do that overnight. We'll get some pallets into storage. And uh, tomorrow we're going to start ploughing, I think. Let's just get these sold. I think we unload this end. I need to stop using the crystal to do the, uh, <laughs> the running about. Because uh, it's slow. So I think we're tipping. Where are we tipping from? Oh, we're tipping out the side anyway. Okay, I'll do. If it's still registering, it's registering. We'll take it. Uh, yeah, but it's still slow. We need to use one of the faster tractors to do our do our deliveries with 16, 15 miles an hour. It's what I get about the map, even a small map. But that's 300 euros for us. That's 300 euros we didn't have. And also, that'll that'll equate to more than 300 units in extra crop when we harvest. So, you know, it swings and roundabouts of whether you do these things. But I thought with this series, we'd try and do as much as we can. We'll add all, add all in all the bits. Like I say, when we go and if we sell our grain crops, we're going to put them in boxes, probably, probably, hopefully, if they'll go in our boxes that we brought, we'll uh, we'll deliver in boxes potatoes and beets that'll go in boxes we might deliver some of our grain you know in a grain cart that would make sense obviously but yeah i'd like to box up as much as we can see if we get an increased rate for that now i was going to roll through and start the plow in this episode but i think we've probably done enough and this is probably going to be longer than i think it is because we've been pretty busy we've done done a fair bit because uh, i've got my little intro to do as well which you know probably took longer to do than uh, than this entire episode 
so yeah hopefully you enjoyed it i am going to head out september 4 i will do some plowing i'm not gonna do all the plowing but we'll plow up a couple of fields so then i'll bring you guys back in october in october we'll go and get our carrots we will then set about delivering everything we have to zup zup and making the uh, the triple soup which will sell for more money we'll plow up whatever fields also need doing and we'll probably plant another grain crop in in well probably two two fields two of our small fields elsewhere maybe one of those big ones again we do want some some money crops or whether we get some oats or some soybeans in the ground if that's planting time for them i think we can plant the oats probably not soya but anyway yeah i hope you've enjoyed this one if you have give it a big fat thumbs up down below if you are new to the channel hit the subscribe button turn the bell notification on find out when new videos are going live as always comments and feedback down there guys tell me what you think of the series so far let me know if i haven't put the post out already let me know under the this video whether you prefer with or without background music i'm not going to put music on this one unless my audio is terrible it's a way of hiding up terrible audio as well by the way so if my audio is terrible we may find we get a lot more videos with music in um, but yeah, let me know. You guys have a wonderful day, and hopefully I'll see you again soon. Bye-bye.